the short version of how to use Wavelen in the blade style. To use the expanded version of one of these transitions so that it has an integer in there instead of just the shortcut version here that has a number. Okay, so let's find this in Outlayer in the style editor here so we can visually see what we're talking about. This is the in Outlayer we're talking about. And the out to in is the retraction. So currently that is going to wipe in over the course of 500 milliseconds. If you hit this expand, it's sort of what's under the hood. The original TR wipe in 500 is actually built with this X function in here, which takes this integer. This is what is replaceable with Wavelen. Anything that you have an integer, you can replace with the Wavelen function. So the easy way, again, just to see it here in Style Editor is you can choose it, and when you hit Expand, it changes it to the proper form. To do it manually, it's the same thing. It would be, here, I'll replace this. Let's say you had a TR fade of 500, okay? So to make it Wavelength compatible, you want the X version, and this 500 becomes integer 500, close, okay? So this part in the middle, this integer, is what is replaceable. So what do we replace it with? Well, we're talking about Wavelen. That's how you do it. Capital W, capital L. It gets opened and closed just like anything else, but in the middle here, you choose which effect sound you want it to be listening to. So in this case, let's say it was for our retraction. Just like the way you build effect retraction shows up in a style for the blade, uh, you use the same format, and so the wavelength of whatever sound plays during effect retraction is now what's going to determine the time for this fade. This works for fade, delay, uh, all the transitions. Anywhere in a style that you can put an integer. That's the short version. Stay tuned for the longer version. You want to change the retraction to follow your in dot waves, right? So it's synced. Well, right now it would wipe in and it would only take 500 milliseconds. Well, what if you have an 1800 millisecond long uh, in dot wave, right? For retraction. Well, we're gonna change TR wipe in to use Wavelen. Now you can't try it yet in the style editor. It doesn't support Wavelen yet. But to use the wave's length instead of this value, first thing you want to do for ease of editing, find this over here on the right column, right? So this is in the in out TR layer. It's down here. And we just keep going down to the bottom. So here we are. Here's the TR wipe. That's the in part. And here's, I mean, that's the out part. This is the in part. I know this is inverse colors and it's not highlighting, but this is what I clicked to get this up. Then, as you have this here, click the expand button. See how it turns it into the X value here? This uh, changes your number to an integer. So now, this will support replacing this part. Don't forget the closing bracket there on the value, right, of the integer. You want that part there. And I'll just space this out so you can see it a little better. This is the part we're going to replace. And you simply replace it with Wavelen, open, and then you choose what effect this is for. So just like in other parts of the style, this would be triggered by, or it's going to listen to whatever is playing during effect or traction, which would be your in dot wave. Uh, and then you can put this back together if you want. This here is the new TR wipe in. Now again, you can't do it in style editor, but you can put it into your config with OS 6. Right now we just started alpha testing it. And it goes for not just wipe in, but fade. You know, TR fade is normally just a value. 
All right, take 500 milliseconds to fade in. Well, to convert that manually, you just make this an X and you add integer of 500, don't forget the closing bracket, so that it looks like what we did before. Oops, I cut off the opening, but don't do that. So you just replace this with, I already typed it out over here. Oh no, I didn't. Uh, okay, well I typed it out here. So I'm just gonna copy this. This is doing it in the config instead of doing it in style editor because you're just gonna cut to the chase and get in here anyway, since you can't see it in there. And there you go, your TR fade X would become that. So you could then copy that. And even if uh, your in out just says TR wipe in, okay, just that part, don't cut off. This closing brace uh, bracket is for this opening. So it's just the TR wipe in with its value. We can replace that. And since it's wipe in, once we paste, we can just change fade to wipe in. And there you go. Now your retraction will follow the wave. <clears throat> and I'm going to change copying this. This ignition for my out wave to also use wavelength. However, it's not retraction. That uses effect ignition. Part two, using percentage. Um, so the story here is I built this force effect to be triggered when you do force, right? And I built it with basically three stages. So if we take a look what's happening here, uh, this transition effect is triggered by effect force, this transition effect layer. And we're stringing together with a concat, a fade in at, uh, or a fade at 700 milliseconds and instantly go to cyan, hang out on cyan for 700 milliseconds, then turn green and wipe that out of here with 700 uh, milliseconds. So the three stages really is show this fire, then show this cyan, and then show this green, which is not pretty and which is intentional. This is just something that's supposed to be obvious to the eye to test and demo how Wavelength can work. So in this case, we're dealing with the sound for force. This would be one of your force zero one wave or whatever wave. And because there are varying lengths of those force effects, maybe you want your blade to sync with the full duration of force and automatically do that. So that's why we're going to use Wavelend here. Uh, again, from session one, remember we had to turn this into the X version so that this is an integer and not just a number. So I've already done that. Uh, so this is a fade X, not doing anything with instant. Delay is already an X and wipe is already an X. So let's leave those things, but I'm gonna change the integer here to use wavelength, just like we did before. But we're gonna add an extra fun thing here. Okay, so I'm just spacing this out so we can easily grab what we're replacing. So again, this is, let's do it. Let's do it like we did before. I'm gonna put this to be Wavelength, but this time we're listening to the effect that's playing during force, right? And I could do that there and there as well, but I'm gonna continue with this. You can use a percentage of the sound for this part. And since I've got this broken up into three parts to make life easy, let's say one third of the wave. So for the first third of the sound, we're gonna do this fade to this color. We're gonna instantly change the cyan so that really doesn't count. Then we're gonna delay and show cyan for the middle third of the sound. And then we're gonna wipe out for the last third. So what you do here is you wrap Wavelen in percentage. And you open that. So it's gonna take a percentage of your Wavelen force played sound, comma, and then what percent you want to play. So in this case, 33, and we close percentage. So if I wanted it to play half of the sound, this, this is out of 100%, I would play, I would put 50 there, and then it would take half the sound time to do that fade. Um, 
if you know if this were 100 it's the same as not putting percentage there at all if you wanted it to take twice as long as your sound you could make it 200 percent take 200 percent of the time of the wave to do this fade so it's literally just a percentage value and again since we're splitting this into thirds i'm going to go with 33 because that's basically thirds i'm going to just copy this and I'm going to replace this integer in this delay. That's the second third. I'm going to, hello, I'm going to come down here and replace this integer, including its brackets there. And I'm going to put that in there. And that's really it. Okay, just learned this today. So this is a good thing. Watch this. Uh, let me go back and undo what we just did, right? Back to this point when I was talking about percentage. When I put in this wavelength for effect force. See how this TR fade X, we defined it, we specified effect retraction is what it would use. So we were coming in here and we're going to replace this integer with wavelength. And because we're in a transition effect layer that's triggered by force, we wanted this to also do effect force, right? Well, because it is in a transition effect layer that already has force triggering it, it already knows that this is going to be effect force. So in this particular setup, you can just put wavelength. So that's what, well, and then we finish this up. This is the one we were doing percentage, right? So we do percentage of wavelength, no specified effect, because it knows. And I made this 33 and closed it. So this is really all we would need to put in our other spots here and put in our other spots here. So you got it? don't need to specify effect force in here. It's redundant because it's already here on the end when you're inside um, transition effect layer. It's just wavelength, open, close. Cool. So that is how to use percentage, basically. Brings us to using wavelength inside a function. So as we've seen, you can replace an integer with wavelength, right? So anywhere you have an integer like that, you can tell it to listen to the speed of the wave. So what I want to do is I want to build this prion to do a wipe from the hilt to the tip for the duration of the prion wave, pretty much a progress bar, just showing you Hey, look, this is taking a second and a half long because that's how long my wave is. Or the next prion you have might only be, you know, 300 milliseconds. I want to see the animation represent the speed. So I'm going to build a prion transition real quick. So we're going to come in here. We're going to go to layers. We're going to make a transition effect layer. And I want it to instantly white is good. And the thing about the white, though, is we're going to make it an alpha layer white so that the shape can be a smooth step, which instead of pulsing on a sign, I'm going to stick in just a plain integer in both of these spots. And the position on the blade between the hilt and the tip is what we're going to want to change based on the wavelength, okay? The step size, I'm going to just right off the bat make one because I want it to be a hard edge. And if I throw this at like 16,000, let's do it right, 16,384, which is half. Um, you can see the smooth step is a hard line here. And I'm going to go back to white on the color. So this is what I want to instantly go to, but I want this thing to start down here and to go up. And actually, now that I look at this, I don't want it to be white and then wipe to black. I want it to be black and then wipe to white. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to change this integer to minus one so that it's actually starting from the health. And now we'll just grow outward from here. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to change this to trigger. Trigger, if you haven't played with it, is an awesome thing. It takes whatever trigger we want, which happens to be uh, prion. So we're going to go to uh, effect prion, if I can find it. There we go. So this is going to trigger when we do prion. How long do we want it to ramp from zero up to three, two, seven, six, eight? That means how long do you want whatever you're assigning this to, to take, to go from nothing to full? And in this case, that's the filling of the whole bleed. It's just the smooth steps position. I want it to go from nothing to full, end to end on the blade. And this is how long. So how long is what we're gonna edit. What I'm gonna do is since I'm in style editor and we can't use wave len in here, I'm going to do the other values for a second first. So how long do I want to stay once it's full? It doesn't really matter because we're gonna go right into ignition. So I'm just gonna say like pretty much immediately because we won't even see that. And just to make life easy, I don't care if it returns. So I'll just make that one too. Um, so this, and then we're gonna finish up with, we need this to wait. Like it's gonna instantly show this, but we don't wanna like quickly wipe it away before it's done. So the length that this is gonna to take to execute is gonna be like we said, the, the wave duration. So since we need it to stay on the blade for that long, this is also going to be that same wavelength duration. I hope that makes sense. But I'm going to make it a delay. And just because the way I do things, I make like placeholders. When I got to move code around, I got to remember where that spot is that I'm planning on editing. I put 777 in uh, just so I can easily find it in the code later. So I know that these are values that I wanted to change. These are the ones I'm going to make wavelength, right? Um, and this whole thing, I only want to show when it's effect, f uh, prion, cause that's what we're building. So that transition layer needs to also be triggered by prion. So this is my thing. And you can, I don't know if you can, didn't know if you know, you can drag that bigger and see this whole thing. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go back to my, uh, my little, Test Wavelength preset. Just ignore these. These are just other blades that I have in the Saber. So those are just not, I'm not changing them. I'm just doing this on the main blade, which is the first style. Uh, and I just pasted in my prion. So again, all we're going to do now is because I've already typed this, I'm going to be lazy and copy it. And I'm going to change those integers that I wanted to edit, which are easily findable because they're sevens. Like this integer here becomes wavelength. And while I'm in here, I'm not listening to force on this one. I'm not doing that. I'm going to prion. So now I have it right. I'm going to copy it correctly. And then the other integer I wanted to change. Okay, now look at this one. I almost, this is good that we did it this way. I did not convert this to the X version of the delay. See, it's still just delay in a number. It's like the shortcut version. If we expand it, it would be delay X with an integer now instead of just a number. So again, you can use the style editor's expand button to do that. You can also just remember how it works. You add an X and the number becomes an integer wrapped in brackets within the old existing brackets. So here is, I'll just space this out so we can see it. TR delay. Let me get, move this over to, uh, nope, that's not right. That's right. Just this. Okay. So this 777, I'm going to make this an X first. The 777 is what would become, nope, integer. Seven, seven, seven. Really? 
You have to put a cap here, Brian. What are you doing? All right. So that's, see now, don't get confused with your closing brackets because we added an integer in there that contains its own value in its own brackets. Before it was just a number. So this bracket goes with this bracket. So these are the pair and then these are the pair, inner, outer. Anyway, the plan was to replace, I think I already copied that, the integer part from the middle with Waveline, Prion. And there we go. So that is building it. The point of this was doing it inside a function, not just on its own. But see here, we did it within trigger. Anything that's in here that does um, like swing speed, let's say, you can expand swing speed. What speed? I mean, not that that's a, that's a terrible example. What's something else? Uh, you know, in a, just your in outs is probably good clash. You could do clash stuff. Uh, if you had a layer, if you had a, well, let's just take the examples, right? Let's say you have responsive clash right here. Um, see, this is not an X version value, but if you want to change how long the clash fades out, you want to fade out the same amount of time that your sound does. You could just make this TR fade X, replace, well, since we made it an X, technically what we're replacing now is this, okay? But without even doing all that, because it was just already here like this, you just know to put an X, and then in here is where you would put Wavelin Effect Clash, because that's a thing. And then you close Wavelin, and now your clash will do it at the same speed, uh, fade out the same time as your audio wave. So let's see what this looks like on the blade. All right, so I've got uh, out dot waves, in dot waves, clash dot waves, force, and prion. All just my voice recorded, and then I made three versions of each sound. There's a short sound, 300 milliseconds, a normal sound, or however long it took me to say it, eight to a thousand milliseconds probably, and then a stretched out long version of two seconds. So as I run this through its paces, turning on and off, you should see animations like we wrote in the preset are listening to the wave file and syncing the wipes and the effects and the fades with the time of the wave. So here we go. Prion, ignition. So prion was slow, took it all the way to the end. Ignition was short, went quickly, retraction. Retraction. Normal. Prion, ignition. That was a real fast prion, so it just banged through it. Ignition was slow. Retraction. <laughs> prion. Ignition. <laughs> and then fast ignition. Now there's also uh, force, which I'm just going to type because I'm not going to hold it. Force. So there's the three-stage force of fire to cyan to green at normal speed. Force. Every third of the wave is doing the next transition. That was slow. Force. Normal. Force. Slow. Force. Fast. Force. And also can do it with clash. 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 See the fade time on clash. 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 Follows the wave. Clash. 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 So there it is working. Retraction. Cool deal.